Since 1886, Johnson & Johnson's name has been on everything. Baby oil, shampoo and conditioner, moisturizer, Dwayne, The Rock Johnson. But one of their most iconic products is talcum baby powder. And while it might have kept our downstairs dry, it also may have caused some very harmful side effects. Johnson & Johnson is facing thousands of lawsuits over allegations that some of its talc powder was contaminated with asbestos. It's been a product mainstay for Johnson & Johnson for decades. Now, talcum baby powder is at the center of multiple investigations. At issue, has the company hidden evidence that its baby powder is linked to asbestos and ovarian cancer in women who use it around their genitals? J&J &J has long since denied the claim, but now documents reveal the company knew about the presence of small amounts of asbestos in its products as far back as 1957, but did not disclose that to the public. Thousands of people have sued J&J, &J, some winning tens of millions of dollars in judgments. Johnson & Johnson ordered to pay $55 million to a South Dakota woman who blamed her ovarian cancer on the company's talcum powder. A St. Louis jury awarded 62-year-old Lois Slemp more than $110 million. A jury awarding a California woman $417 million. One single verdict for 20 women exceeded $2 billion. Whoo-wee. That's a lot of lawsuits. I mean, you know you f***ed up when your company is giving away more money than Powerball. And I get why it's happening. Because, guys, you cannot be selling baby powder with asbestos in it. People are rubbing this stuff all over their bodies. Not to mention the cocaine dealers who mix it in with their product. Now you've got innocent cokeheads snorting asbestos. It's unacceptable. Now, the experts over at Johnson & Johnson, they, they, they have found a cure. But unfortunately, it's not a cure for the cancer. It's for the company's legal problems. Johnson & Johnson is filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in hopes of what the company says of disposing of 40,000 lawsuits. In order to limit their liability, as well as to shield their corporate assets, Johnson & Johnson pulled something that's actually known as the Texas Legal Loophole, also known as the Texas to step Defense. J&J is this super rich health products company headquartered in New Jersey. So J&J went to Texas, and using a quirk of that state's laws, they created a completely new company called LTL. Then Johnson & Johnson dumped all the liability for these baby powder asbestos lawsuits, you know, tens of billions of dollars of legal risk into this new firm. Then the new company, LTL, quickly filed for bankruptcy. Critics say the company is abusing the legal system and have called the bankruptcy filing a gimmick. Yeehaw! The Texas two-step. I'll spin that jury round and round, change your name and flee the town. Do I get a record deal? This is insane, people. Johnson & Johnson is pretty much trying to do the first thing everyone thinks of when they get caught. Blame it on their evil identical twin. I mean, we've all tried it. The only difference is it somehow actually works if you're a powerful corporation. Honestly, I'm, I'm almost impressed. I just wish they put as much effort into COVID immunity as they did into their legal immunity. But look, as, as crazy as this is, J&J is hardly a trailblazer when it comes to abusing bankruptcy laws to get out of trouble. Purdue Pharma has filed for bankruptcy as the maker of OxyContin tries to protect itself from mounting lawsuits. Purdue Pharma made billions off the painkiller OxyContin. The bankruptcy filing is seen as a way to protect Purdue Pharma from nearly 3,000 lawsuits. The Boy Scouts of America has filed for bankruptcy protection after an onslaught of lawsuits alleging rampant sexual abuse of children for decades. They may claim that they don't have the ability to play these, pay these claims, but but the real reality is that they use the bankruptcy to really continue to hide and shield themselves from real liability and forced disclosure. The Roman Catholic Church is one of the world's wealthiest institutions. Across the United States, priest abuse victims, now adults, are lining up to sue their diocese for damages. But the church is going to extraordinary lengths to protect its assets, and that strategy is bankruptcy. Chapter 11 was not designed to protect organizations who've engaged in criminal conduct or basically protecting criminal conduct. It was designed to give companies who made bad business decisions a new start. Yeah, I'm sorry, people. Purdue Pharma is not bankrupt. 
and the Catholic Church is definitely not bankrupt. Ain't no bishops rolling into pawn shops asking how much they can get for that Michelangelo ceiling. Now, the Boy Scouts are the ones where I'm like, yeah, you, you might actually be broke. I mean, these guys are rubbing sticks together to start a fire, my man. 12-pack of Bic lighters is like three bucks. Get your life together. 